thank you Audible for sponsoring this video. Get amazing audiobooks, access to daily news digests, and guided meditation programs with the link in the description below. Oh, it's so windy. So windy. Can't, can't film outside today. Hey guys, what's up? My name is Sarah Dici Renzo Peachy. Today we have the iPad 2020 review. We're talking all things iPad. Uh, you could probably loop this up in with the 2018 iPad Pro as well because they're pretty similar. That is one of the biggest questions people ask me. Is it worth upgrading from a 2018 iPad Pro to the 2020? Not a lot has changed besides now the 2020 has an ultra wide camera, a LiDAR sensor, and the insides have changed, but not a ton. It is the new-ish A12Z processor uh, that basically has like an extra GPU core. A lot of the benchmarks shared that there is not actually a performance difference like at all. There's an extra two gigs of RAM going from four gigs to six gigs and now the base models are starting at 128 gigabytes of storage instead of 64. Like an iPad Pro starting at 64 gigabytes is just a little, eh. So I'm glad we're at 128. The new camera bump also has a brighter flash as well as the new LiDAR sensor. This is going to enhance your AR experiences. Not a ton of people are into it right now, but I guess it's essentially future-proofing this guy to all of the cool AR things that maybe we'll see. There are two really good AR experience apps out right now. One is by Cause, the art dude, where you can put his art into the world. It's like not the best, but I would equate the differences between like not having the LiDAR sensor and having the LiDAR sensor with that experience versus the IKEA app. The IKEA app, is so cool. So you can basically place their furniture wherever you want with like crazy accuracy. It's able to calculate like multiple surfaces in one room and then they hide little nuggets. Oh my gosh, this was such a fun discovery. When I was playing around with a lamp that is a speaker, I zoomed in a little bit and boom, there's a band performing for me. <laughs> You can't hear the audio of what I was saying, but I I lost it. Okay, so those are literally the only differences. So now that we got those out the way, now it's time to talk about what I actually wanna talk about. And I see this iPad being effective for two different groups of people. <laughs> I find myself in the first group. So this is a creative professional who basically has a laptop or a desktop as their main thing. They can't get the job done unless they have Premiere, unless they have After Effects, they need that setup. But the iPad is a very interesting accessory, an added benefit to their productivity workflow when they're not doing the most intensive of their tasks. So it's a nice to have. You got some money to spend. And the camp of creatives that I can see fall into option number two are the illustrators because ho, oh, obviously this is awesome for illustrators. So let's hop into it. Let's start with the first group, which is me. This is why it took so long to get this video to you guys. I am so sorry, um, but I've been using this so much. You mobile editors, whether it's photos, videos, you have a MacBook or another type of laptop at the center of your workflow. Well, do I have news for you? Sidecar is amazing. It is literally amazing. At the core of it, it's where you can use your iPad as a second display to your computer. When you're using the iPad as a second display to your MacBook or iMac, all touch support, all of the Apple Pencil things that you would normally do, you can do on the iPad. This means that you're in Photoshop, you wanna use the touch. You know, sometimes I'm in these applications and oh, if only I could just use a pencil for this. Well, touch is surprisingly really good. The image that you get on the iPad as a second display is so crisp. There's almost zero latency, and I only used it over Wi-Fi. I didn't even use the wired connection, and I was shooketh. So now the iPad isn't, oh, a cool way to edit pictures in the Lightroom app, which is really good and fun to use. Oh, not just a way to watch Netflix on an airplane, but hey, it's a great companion to your bigger MacBook when you travel or maybe at home if you don't have a second display. So before you get too excited about Sidecar, here is a list of the compatible devices. The only thing you need to do to set it up is make sure the iPad and your Mac is connected to the same Apple ID. You wanna go up into the AirPlay device icon and your 
iPad will pop up. You click it, you have some options, whether you have the sidebar with the option control command keys, have the toolbar there. Space does get pretty limited with the 11 inch when you start using Sidecar, um, but on the 12.9 inch, it was a dream. It was so much fun. John uses iPad with his podcast with his brother using Sidecar, um, and it was just, it was awesome. It was such a cool setup. Um, the only problem, and I think this has to do more with the programs he was running, it was a lot of stuff. Those fans on the 16 inch MacBook Pro, boy, do they go they were cooking. So I imagine that affected his audio a little bit, but boy, was he productive. We've been complaining for a while that the MacBook Pros don't use all the power available to them because they can't cool properly. So it's like, make up your mind, Sarah, if you want that the fans are gonna kick on a little bit, you know? People with Windows laptops right now, you're kind of sad, right? Kind of depressed. Oh, well, I wanna use Sidecar. Well, guess what? There's an app for that. There's an app called Duet that I have used several times. Again, after using Sidecar with it, it's not as crispy, it's not as low latency, but it still does a really great job making the iPad a second display to a Windows computer. It's 100% free to do it via the USB-C connection. You just connect your laptop and iPad, but if you wanna use the wireless connection to use this as your second display. I think it's like $20 a year. A little bum that it's a subscription-based model. I would have loved to maybe just pay a one-time $30 payment, be done with it. But for me, it's something I see I would use all the time if I ever travel again. I haven't been in a hotel in so long. They also have a version where you can use the Apple Pencil uh, with your iPad, with your Windows laptop, but it's terrible. Don't spend the money for that, it's really bad. And then Apple Arcade, I actually tried that for the first time ever and it's just fun, it's fun. I hear the kids these days, the young kids, they take iPads and play with them all the time and there's a lot of options. And hey, I would like to take this time to thank our sponsor today. Audible, Audible, I love you. Last time that we talked about Audible, I mentioned that I was listening to the Steve Jobs biography and I love it, it's super good. I got a third of the way there and then you know, my mood changed, just life changed. And now I'm listening to uh, George Orwell's 1984 again. I read it in school. I think I'm feeling a little, a little weird in these times and for some reason, listening to this is like comforting. It's really good storytelling. Half the time you're like, could this happen? Could this be us? I very rarely listen to fiction novels, so it's a good change of pace. You can only listen to so many self-help business books. <laughs> and Audible has a lot of them, if that's what you want. Hey, if that's what, that's okay if that's what you want. If you want to check out the huge selection of audiobooks that Audible offers, go to audible.com slash Saradici, or you can text Saradici to 500-500, but also, Audible sees you. They see you guys. A lot of people are taking on the entire education of your children as schools are out right now. And that's why they launched stories.audible.com where there are hundreds of titles that you can stream for free. I feel like right now we are behind screens just more than ever. Uh, so yeah, this offers a really fun way. Maybe pop in some earbuds, go frolic around, listen to some epic educational entertaining stories. So yeah, you have an amazing audiobook experience you can look forward to with your family every single day. I love that, I love that. Okay, let's talk about number two, the second group of people. You want this, you, you want maybe this, that, to be your laptop replacement. You're tired of laptops that you can't touch. You don't want that. I mean, you could just get a two-in-one. I feel like we should change my name to Sarah Two-in-One Dici. I love it, I love it, but I love this now too. So the first people I think about are you illustrators using Procreate, using all these cool tools that you have at the disposal on the iPad, the apps are great. Listen, the lack of ability to run desktop level apps, a huge problem for video creators, but illustrators, dream come true. One of my internet friends, Haley Tipman, she is such a good illustrator. She has an iPad Pro, she uses Procreate, and I asked her for this video, hey, can you send me some of your time lapses just so we can stare and admire and inspire. I mean, there are some insanely powerful apps on this guy. 
Making the iPad your laptop is now easier than ever, and it's actually possible, because um, it has official mouse support where you can connect a Bluetooth mouse, and also you have this new keyboard, the Magic Keyboard, where your iPad magically, magnetically snaps onto there. It is a really great way to keep it balanced on your lap, to be able to have a good typing experience. And this Magic Keyboard, there's a lot of travel distance, and it's just a really good all-around keyboard, but it has a trackpad. <gasps> a trackpad! It's officially a laptop. Top. So I have an entire video on this guy that I'll link in the little i card and also in the description below. And I also run you through how to make a mouse, a Bluetooth connected mouse, a part of your workflow. Connection is easy, you just go to Bluetooth settings, but there's some things to know. I'll link that video, but mouse support, boom. One step closer to merging those touch and laptop worlds. So let's talk about those creative apps for you illustrators, photographers. Affinity Design, Affinity Photo, Procreate, they really fill in those Adobe size gaps if you don't wanna pay for a subscription uh, and also if you're just not satisfied where those apps are at right now because the Photoshop app is really half-baked. It's so close and especially when I showed you earlier, you can have a full pin experience on the desktop Photoshop using Sidecar, you're like, ah, just give us, give us all that on an iPad app, right? But if you do have the Adobe CC subscription, some apps that I would really challenge you to download because they are super fun to use, super easy to use, and fully competent, they're great, is Lightroom CC and also Adobe Fresco. So Fresco is kind of similar to Procreate, except you have some really cool brushes. You have vector brushes. So you could take your drawing that you just drew on your tiny iPad and blow it up to infinity and it wouldn't get all crazy and pixelated. And then also it has has what they call live brushes. So it's oil and watercolors, and they basically interact with the canvas just as if you were doing it in real life. It's super fun to test out, to see in real life. It almost seems it's like, how is this digital? So Adobe's trying, they're out there, they are. And now that iPad OS has a files app, thank goodness it's never been easier to import edit, export your pictures. If you're using Lightroom, you don't have to throw everything into the Photos app. You can stay really, really organized just as if you're interacting with it on a MacBook. You know, it has a real file system now. You can connect your Google Drive in here. This is my iCloud Drive. Let's talk about some of the things that we're missing that we might actually see come June of this year at WWDC. Some of the Apple apps for creators like Final Cut, video editing app, and also Xcode for you programmers might be coming. There are rumors. How cool would it be to be a programmer and only have to carry around an iPad? That'd be awesome. I mean, that's still one of the biggest problem with the iPad is, you know, you lack support for desktop level apps. And a lot of you guys are like, hey, Microsoft, Windows computers have been doing this forever with two-in-ones. You have touch display with a Microsoft Surface. Uh, you can run full Windows on the Surface. And you know what? I addressed this in my, in my Magic Keyboard video. Roll that clip just really quick. If you think about it, Microsoft and Apple, they're both trying to accomplish the same thing, but they're getting there from different starting points. iPad, it started with touch. It forced developers to say, hey, we have to develop for touch. People aren't even thinking about using their iPad as a laptop, so we have to prioritize that. The Microsoft Surface Pro and all of the different two-in-ones their laptops, right? And touch is the second priority. So they have the laptop experience down, but they lack in all of the cool apps, the touch apps. So it's not about who is better, it's about what are your needs? Do you need a laptop first or an iPad touch experience first? But this gets me very curious to see who wins the race of having it all. And this is a good step in the right direction for Apple. When it comes to a serious video editing workflow on the iPad, really the only one to go to right now is Luma Fusion. It enables you to have up to six tracks of video and audio, it has titles, it has all the things, and now with mouse support, it's easier honestly than ever to edit a proper video on here. One app that you guys have um, seen me share about is Vlo. Vlo has an amazing free version that you can get to editing really quick. I use that for some social videos and stuff, but I'm getting sidetracked, so Luma Fusion. As it stands right now, it is the video editing app for the iPad. However, when you do video as a profession, you use a ton of different video cameras all the time. You have certain professional workflows that you're just used to, and it works with other editors who are also using Premiere, Final Cut, DaVinci Resolve. You're just not going to downgrade your experience 
experience to a app that is super limiting. I mean, it's still limiting. I was really excited to crack open Luma Fusion, maybe edit a video or two on it, but immediately I hit a problem where it only supports, I think like two codecs and I had ProRes footage and it doesn't support ProRes footage. So just from right out the gate, I was like, oh, I was so excited. I had my footage on a hard drive, you know, I connected the hard drive via USB-C to here and I viewed it on the files app and it was looking so good. But again, I just hit a wall. So video editors are the one, one type of person, one type of creative that I can confidently say, like, do not get an iPad as your main machine. It just, it does not make sense. If you have a certain amount of money, you need to upgrade, get a desktop, get a laptop, do not get an iPad. Here are some helpful apps to download uh, to just get your start if you wanna change the iPad for your full computer. Number one, Yoink, it's a fun name. It's a shelf app. It basically acts as your desktop on your laptop or your computer. It's a place where you can just throw over images, text, it pops up on your keyboard so you can send the latest things that you've copied and pasted to friends without going into photos. And it's just really handy to keep over in slide overview um, to yeah, just drag and drop wherever. Number two, LastPass, it's just a password manager. Get a password manager. A lot of them are free. You never have to remember a password again. And you can just have really secure passwords that are all different. And when you're switching over your entire life to a new device, having all of your passwords saved in one spot, download the LastPass app and be good to go is super handy. Toggle is a really good productivity app that tracks your time and it's just a very pretty interface. Things 3 is a really, really great list making app. I love it a ton. Really easy to move things around via touch, but also with a lot of keyboard shortcuts. And good notes for Note-taking, journaling, notability is also a good note-taking app, and I personally use OneNote. Are you guys hanging in there? I know I have so many things to say about this. I don't know how long this video is gonna be. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. Um, the last two things I wanna talk about is the 11 inch versus the 12.9 inch, and also, what are some of the problems I ran into as I was using the iPad as my laptop? I think my family is about to come in here and eat dinner, so I gotta move out of the kitchen. Um, gosh. Making videos in your childhood home, it's a little difficult. So we're gonna come back. I don't know where I'll be. I don't know if it's gonna be another day, but I'll be back. Johnny, you ruined my videos? Yes. Are you ruining my videos? Yes. You wanna come say hi? Come say hi. They need to know that I have a brother. Hello. It's me, how does John this, Gigi. How does this feel? He, guys, get this. So natural. he has no social media. He's a ghost. His sister is a YouTuber, which is the complete opposite of that. And I keep saying, hey, John, you should you should start some social media. You could you could talk to the people. You could share your wisdom. Do you have any wisdom no. for us? I'm off Brother the grid. John? Are you kidding me? You're off I'm the not grid. getting what on do there. You mean off the grid. You're fine. You could be on the grid. I don't like being on the grid. I'm not a grid guy. I'm off the grid guy. You know. The grid <laughs> okay. wasn't made for. Me. All right, go get our food. Okay. <laughs> Okay, the only quiet place in the house is the dark and dingy room, so hopefully this works, but let's continue. Also, if you're wondering why there has been fewer videos in the past couple months is it's very hard to make videos. It's just a challenge, but I'll be back in my office soon enough. So if you're using this as your laptop, let's talk about the issues that I personally ran into. Um, screen sharing during video calls, it's a problem. As you can imagine, a lot of my work-related things has moved over just like you guys to Zoom, Google Hangouts. I've been doing a lot of Google Hangouts. It's not called that. It's now called Meet. Google needs to get the names and everything under control. But there was a point in a call where I needed to share my screen to show the walking through of something on the interwebs and I couldn't. You can't do screen sharing on this. I mean, that's something you can do on like a cheap $200 Chromebook, you know? It's just these little things that you don't, you don't expect that you would have to worry about. Number two, connections. We have one USB-C. Uh, if you get the Magic Keyboard, you have another USB-C on the side. So the connectivity just isn't the best. You can again have mini dongles, even MacBook users have to go through that. Um, but yeah, the lack of IO and also speed, you know? This isn't a Thunderbolt 3 port. I have a lot of fast hard drives. My Lacy 6 Big is a Thunderbolt 3 connection not gonna work. So the next thing, I'm a fan of all the multitasking, but split view, 
pip mode. All those things are something that the engineers have to code into the apps in order to do it, right? So a lot of times when I'm watching Netflix, I'll have Netflix on one side and like notes or Twitter, scrolling Twitter on the other side. So many times I would try to put Netflix in split view mode and it just doesn't work. So you're literally at the mercy of the app. Like, no, I don't think you wanna watch Netflix that way. With the two bars on top, you don't wanna watch Netflix that way. So we're just not gonna enable split view. I'm used to being on my XPS, just do that window snapping and we're good. You kind of run into these quirks all the time, like on the YouTube app, if you're using a keyboard, the space bar doesn't pause. The common actions that you're used to doing just don't work on the apps. When I was using Asana, I couldn't copy the text in the comment section of Asana and paste it somewhere else. I could do all these things that I just said in Safari on youtube.com and asana.com. So a lot of times the apps kind of just become pointless and then thank goodness Safari is really great on the iPad, really responsive. You get desktop Safari, which is great. You can even use YouTube in PIP mode using Safari, which is again, fantastic. But then it just becomes weird because you're using Safari for more things. And then you're like, what's the point of iPad apps? And it's just like, that is just a little weird. It's a little quirky. <sighs> So I think I've done a decent job of illustrating all the different ways to use the iPad. Is the iPad for you? I don't know. I can't answer that for you. But again, if you don't have that main machine that you can do everything on, a desktop, a laptop, and you're strapped for cash. You have to make one purchase that does it all. Well, I made a graph for you where my brain's at with computers. <laughs> okay, so for light photo, video productivity work, laptops, Dell XPS 13 2-in-1, my go-to, it does it all. I love it. For the computer setup, go with an iMac 27 inch, and you don't even have to spec that guy all the way out. You get a beautiful, pretty color accurate display attached to a very good computer. Just make sure you go with the SSD option. They're Fusion drives are so slow. I don't even know why they're still selling those in there. And then for that heavy video VFX creative, um, where I stand right now, the MacBook Pro 16 is smashing value. After three plus years of hating the MacBook, hating the butterfly keyboards, all the issues with that computer, the terrible lack of airflow, the MacBook Pro 16 inch has finally arrived. It does the MacBook Pro name good, well. Good? It does the MacBook well grammar. I don't know. And then if you don't travel a lot, wow, you can really hook yourself up with a dope PC. I would recommend Origin or Main Gear. They're my two favorites. This is an Origin PC. You can get fun with it, RGB. You can really customize it down to a T and your money's going to go far away. So those are my computer recommendations as of May 2020. <laughs> okay, so the 11 inch iPad Pro versus the 12.9 inches. Now, when you look at these side by side and you go with the setup that I personally chose, 11 inch with a smart folio keyboard versus this big boy with the magic keyboard. Honestly, this just looks so sad. <laughs> so if you're going for a full on laptop replacement vibe, honestly, this 12.9 inch came in clutch when doing all of those programs and sidecar using the pencil. The Magic Keyboard keyboard is amazing, um, but again, it's an extra $349, an extra $299 for um, the 11 inch. So if you do a ton of typing and that's your first priority, maybe consider that. Um, but the trackpad was so small in that case that I didn't really enjoy that process anyways. So I figured, hey, I have my MX Master with me all the time. I can just set up the mouse where it's the second option I press one button and I can start using the mouse with the iPad if I want. Also for me, it didn't make sense to have a tablet that was bigger than my Dell XPS. Like it kind of defeated the purpose. This is already small and easy to bring anywhere, but if I want something even smaller and more portable than this, well, it's, it's this. So yeah, it really comes down to your existing setup and your priorities. The only thing that I'll say with this big guy, oh, it's a big guy, isn't it? Uh, when I was using this and the Magic Keyboard, it did become like, laptop. So it stayed on the case pretty much 24 seven and I never used this as a tablet. And it's honestly so fun to use as a tablet. It's so thin. It just feels right in your hand. And I just, I, I find myself some days with this like this, just like getting work done. It's mobile. It's fun. It's kind of inspiring the way you use some of the apps. And I just never use the big guy um, for that. So it really depends what you need, what your needs are, how you're going to be using it. And this is going to be the same weight. It's pretty hefty as a 
MacBook Air. I don't think that's a problem because hey, you have a laptop, but also a touch surface that can remove really easily. Um, but it just depends. Is that too heavy for you? Because that was one of the reasons why I went with the 11 inch. It's really fun seeing John enjoying the 12.9 inch iPad setup. He is an illustrator. He is in Procreate for hours every single day. So I think that iPad just makes way more sense for him. So yeah, I'm gonna give the 12.9 inch to John and uh, wow, that is going to make a huge difference for him in Procreate. Not just the chip upgrade and the speed upgrade coming from the $329 iPad, but the screen real estate. I think he's really gonna enjoy it. This is the first time that I've ever been really genuinely excited about the iPad Pro. Recently, I just bought cheap iPads to like watch Netflix on the airplane with and stuff like that. But now I'm using it for more. I'm using it for productivity, all the things. Touch surfaces in general, like iPads, are still in this weird middle ground. You know, at least on Surface devices, you can run full Windows, right? You can run desktop apps, which is awesome. But then at the same time, they don't have the App Store. A lot of those times in those devices, touch is kind of an afterthought, you know? So I'm curious, what do you think? Can these two worlds mutually coexist. Does a product have to lack desktop performance if it's touch first? Does it have to lack on the touch experience if it's desktop first? A question I could talk about for days, but I'm not. This video is ending. <laughs> you, you guys are like, oh, thank God. Thank goodness, how long was this video? This iPad Pro is one great step in the direction for Apple. The future is exciting. Thanks for tuning in. Let me know if you like this video. Hit that subscribe button for new videos every single week. Check out my podcast, That Creative Life, where I have candid combos with YouTubers, CEOs, business professionals, and artists. Until next time, stay peachy and okay, um, bye.